Uh, in question one, the diagram shows the apparatus used to obtain the crystals of calcium chloride uh, from mixture of a solid calcium chloride and solid calcium carbonate. Calcium chloride is a soluble in water and calcium carbonate is insoluble. Complete the boxes to name the apparatus. What is the name given to the first box? So you can mention a stand or a tripod stand. The first one stand or tripod stand. What about the second box? The name given to the second box. So you can mention a stirrer. Or you can mention this as a glass rod. In the next question, write down the order in which the apparatus should be used in experiment. We are obtaining, because what we are doing, the diagram shows an apparatus used to obtain a crystal of calcium chloride from a mixture of solid calcium chloride and calcium carbonate. So what should be the order in which we obtain this? So B, A, C, first we should uh, state so that the soluble calcium chloride will dissolve and insoluble calcium carbonate will remain insoluble, like will not dissolve, then we'll filter and then we will use crystallization or evaporate all of the water. So it will be B, then it is C and then it is A. Because what we are doing, we have a mixture here. We have two salts. What are the salts present? We have calcium chloride and calcium carbonate. Calcium chloride is soluble, where calcium carbonate is insoluble. Calcium chloride dissolves, but calcium carbonate does not dissolve. So when we add water as stir, so calcium carbonate will remain insoluble and calcium chloride will dissolve. So what we'll do, we should filter it. So when we filter on the filter paper, the residue will be calcium carbonate and what passes through the filter paper, that is a filtrate, that is a solution of calcium chloride. And then, then calcium chloride, we will heat and evaporate or remove all of the water. So we are left with calcium chloride. Is it clear? Name the separation process in C, what we call, we call that as a filtration. What has been added to a mixture in B? What we add to a mixture in B? Like we have a mixture of calcium chloride and calcium carbonate, what we add to the mixture in B? We have calcium, 
look we have a mixture the mixture is calcium chloride and calcium carbonate what we add to a mixture we add water to a mixture so water is added because already in the beginning of the question the start of the question they pointed out that you have a mixture of calcium chloride solid calcium chloride and solid calcium carbonate so what is added in a b you add water to make a solution of calcium chloride and calcium carbonate will remain insoluble what is the journal name given to a liquid in this c what is the journal name given to this liquid which is in this that's a filtrate how do we know when to stop heating in a like because what we are doing we are heating it we are removing the water so that the solid will appear or the solid calcium chloride so yeah when the crystals start to appear or we can also use a stirrer or a glass rod because normally it will be difficult to cool down whole solution like example example this was the beginning of the experiment you are start heating it so when you start heating it the liquid will evaporate the level of the or amount of liquid will change but how you will identify whether you should stop heating so there are different ways if the crystal appear to form on the surface that is one thing or what you can do you can take a glass rod and dip in the solution if the crystals form on the glass rod that time you will stop heating it because that is a point we identify that we reach a point of crystallization so when the solid appear we can use a glass rod dip in solution if solid formed on the glass rod we will stop heating it or if the solid appear on the surface of the dish we can also stop heating it in the next question a teacher investigated the rate of reaction between two solutions j and k and sulfuric acid at different temperature experiment four experiments were carried out experiment 1 a large magic cylinder was used and poured into 50 cm cube of distilled water and 40 cm cube of sulfuric acid into a 250 cm cube conical flask the small magic cylinder is used to add 2 cm cube of methyl orange and 5 cm cube of solution j to a mixture in a conical flask the temperature of the mixture was measured the reaction was started by adding 5 cm cube of solution k to a conical flask and immediately starting the timer and swirling the mixture the time taken for mixture to turn pale yellow or light yellow is measured and the final temperature of a mixture are measured the same experiment uh, one was repeated like experiment 2 is done when experiment 1 was repeated by the mixture in a conical flask heated to about 30 degree before adding to solution k and so on for experiment 340 experiment 450 the stop clock diagram of these experiments are on page 
use the stop clock diagram to record the time in the table and work out the average to complete the table so what is the time interval the first one what is the time interval is it readable so what is the time interval in the first one for crystals to appear inside one is in minutes and the outside one is a second so 128 that's the first one what about the second one and when you take an average yeah so first we'll complete the time 58 what about the third one the time interval first i'll complete the time uh, column 128 58 the third one is 27 and the last one is 18 seconds and what about the average 15 and uh, 17 average that will be 16 the second one 27 the third one average for the third one 41 and the last one 50 so these are the values for us 128 16 because in the next part we have to sketch a graph plot a graph so plot the results on the grid and draw a smooth line graph on x axis we have average temperature and on y axis we have time so when the average temperature when we take the first value when the average temperature was 16 the time was 128 so 16 and 128 and this will go to 128 maybe the marking might be not accurate as i am using the grid here each box stands for 2 so 128 so this will be 128 the second average was 27 and 58 so 27 and 58 so it will be here then the third 41 and 27 the 58 marking because each box stands for 4 so 58 will be between uh, 56 and 60 then 41 and 27 and then the last one is 50 and 18 
50 and 18. So when we complete this, a smooth line graph we have to draw, means we have to join these points and draw a smooth line graph. <clears throat> not with the ruler don't try to join point by point this is a freehand graph so just join these points In the next question, from your graph, deduce the time taken for the mixture to turn pale yellow if the experiment one was repeated and an average temperature of 60. So if experiment one was there at average temperature of 60, so how we can work out, so you have to extrapolate this graph means you have to continue this graph because it's not, we don't have the any value at 60. So we continue the pattern as we continue this pattern. So as you continue this pattern, you can work out when the temperature is 60, what will be the time interval according to your graph. Is it clear? In which experiment was the rate of the reaction fastest? Which experiment the reaction rate was the fastest? Experiment one, two, three, or four. In the last experiment or experiment four. And what was the reason for that? Why the experiment four, the reaction rate was faster? So higher temperature, so what is the effect of higher temperature? The molecule will have more energy. No, not about the time. You have to explain a reason. And it is obvious if the reaction is faster, it will take less time. So you cannot mention anything related to a time interval. So high temperature, the particle will have more energy. So they will have more collagen or greater chance of collagen. So high temperature. The particle will have more energy, so greater chance of collagen. Suggest, uh, suggest and explain the effect. Yeah, that's right. The molecule gain ki more kinetic energy and result in more effective collagen. Suggest and explain the effect on the result of using a burette to measure the volume of solution J. If you want to measure the volume of solution J, what will be the effect of using a burette? So that will give more accurate, it will increase the accuracy. Because burettes are more accurate as compared to imaging cylinder.
So burettes are more accurate, so you'll have more accurate result if you are using a burette as compared to measuring cylinder. Suggest and explain other improvement to this experiment. What else you can do? Or if you want to improve this experiment. So this is an experiment. What else we can do to improve this experimental accuracy? We are not heating anything here. So if we are like we heat the like what we did, we are heating a substance, but we are not maintaining a temperature. We just add and it is reacting at that specific temperature. That they already mentioned, like uh, using a more accurate operators already they mentioned in the previous part. Basically what is happening in the question, as you see the question, yes, use more accurate thermometer or you can see when you are heating a solution, and mixing them together, the, the solution will lose its energy to the surrounding as it become hot. So what you can do to improve the experimental accuracy, you can use a lagging or insulation. So the purpose of using a lagging or insulation so that the temperature or the energy will not be lost to the surrounding. So we can use for ex experimental accuracy. Repetition is also acceptable. Repetition is, can be done. So use lagging or insulation, which reduce the heat loss. And you can also use more accurate thermometer here. But about the volumetric flask like burette or pipette, it's because it is already mentioned in the previous part. So the answer for changing a measuring cylinder with burette or pipette is not acceptable. It can be an improvement, but not in this case. Why? Because already they asked in the previous question. This is about salt analysis, identification of ions. Two solids L and M were analyzed. Solid L is a copper two chloride and M is a different salt. Test on solid and some of the observation are shown. Describe the appearance of solid L. It is copper chloride. It cannot be white. White cannot be white because it contain a transition element. So blue is acceptable but in practice because how you work out or how you said it is blue with reference to copper you mentioned it is blue with reference to copper you mentioned blue but actually the so blue is acceptable they did not deduct marks for writing blue but in practical it is green in color copper two carbonate copper two chloride both are green in color. Copper sulfate is blue in color. But it cannot be white. Why you cannot say it is white? Because there's a transition element. And transition element, the characteristic of the transition element, they form colored compounds. So you cannot have a 
white compound zinc is forming a white compound zinc and scandium that is why they are not classified as transition element okay in the next distilled water was added to solid l and shaken to dissolve the solution was divided into four equal portions drop of aqueous ammonia was added to the first portion and excess of aqueous ammonia was added to a mixture and shaken what is the observation if we add first aqueous ammonia to a copper salt what is the observation when small amount of ammonia is added to a copper salt so it will form blue precipitate aqueous ammonia or sodium hydroxide aqueous sodium hydroxide it will give a blue precipitate which will dissolve in excess to form a deep blue solution so the first one it will form a blue precipitate and which will dissolve in excess to form deep blue solution excess of sodium hydroxide was added to a second portion if we add too much sodium hydroxide what is the observation why the question is of four marks one mark is for mentioning blue one mark is for mentioning precipitate one mark is for mentioning dissolve one mark is for mentioning deep blue solution that's why it is a four marks we are adding an aqueous sodium hydroxide what we will observe in excess excess of uh, sodium hydroxide what happened to copper precipitate will it dissolve copper it is copper and excess of sodium hydroxide is added when you add few drops it will form blue precipitate when you add an excess the precipitate does not dissolve so it will form a blue precipitate which will not dissolve in excess in excess of sodium hydroxide the copper precipitate only soluble in aqueous ammonia they are insoluble in excess of sodium hydroxide then dilute nitric acid was followed followed by aqueous silver nitrate that is a test for halide this is a test for chloride ion bromide ion or iodide ion and already we know it is copper chloride what is the observation if the chloride ion is there so this will form a white ppt or white precipitate in exam you can write ppt or you can write precipitates then a dilute nitric acid followed by aqueous barium nitrate this is a test for sulfate ion is there any sulfate in this they, they already mentioned it is copper to chloride so there is no sulfate so there will be no no visible change or no reaction you can mention then test on solid m was carried out appearance is white so if it is appearance is white it is means it is a non transition element it does not contain any transition el element the solid was heated a gas given off turned the damp red litmus a sublimate formed on the side of a test tube a litmus paper turned blue m was dissolved in water and aqueous sodium hydroxide was added a solution was heated and a gas is tested so this is a test for ammonia ion if a pungent gas 
which will turn red litmus blue so this is a test it it confirm this there is ammonium ion present dilute nitric acid was added to a solution followed by silver nitrate yellow precipitate this is a test for halide chloride bromide or iodide so this confirms the yellow precipitate confirm that there is iodide ion so which salt is this it is ammonium iodide and iodine salts normally iodine salts sublimate like they convert directly from solid to gas so identification of m m is ammonium iodide and how we identify its ammonium iodide because this test is a test for ammonium ion when we add sodium hydroxide and heat a pungent gas which turned red litmus blue or ph 10 shows alkaline gas or ammonia is released and this is a test for iodide so it is ammonium iodide is it clear this part then <clears throat> the last question is a planning of experiment the label on the bottle of orange drink, uh, drink stated contain no artificial coloring a scientist thought that the orange color in the drink was a mixture of two artificial colors sunset yellow and allura red which is e1 these are the color color codes for the food coloring plan an investigation to show that the orange color in the drink did not contain these artificial colors you are provided with a sample of e110 and e129 and the orange color from the drink you are also provided with common lab apparatus you may draw a diagram to help your answer if a question is you may draw then yeah you will use the chromatography but if in a question they mention you may it should be you should draw so what we will do in this that's right we'll use a technique a chromatography so how we carry out this how we will work out this so we will use chromatography then we will draw the baseline with pencil then basically we will place yeah pour drops of the dye add the orange color to the chromatogram you can also mention your answers in a chat water then use suitable solvent what solvent we will use because water soluble are there so we will use water as a solvent then measure the rf value then repeat with e 110 and e 129 and the result will show different rf values this is one way what else you can do you can use a chromatogram and you will draw a baseline with a pencil when you draw a figure or a diagram it should always be a label so here is the orange food color example this was e110 and this one is e129 e1110 e129 and orange color we'll use a suitable solvent for this and the level of the solvent should be below the origin because if the orange color does not contain these food colors 
so what will happen we will have a different position of the these spots will have different positions so from this we can conclude or we can say this is the last point where the level will rise that is known as a solvent front so we can place all of them on the one paper chromatogram and compare the height if they are on the same height it means or it shows that uh, orange coloring having e110 and e129 but if different height it means that the orange color does not contain any of these food colors is it clear this experiment labeled it should be labeled like you should mention a solvent chromatogram solvent front a baseline container a beaker or you can mention in terms of rf value so this was paper 6 from february march 2016